Hello, welcome back to another week of High Gardens. This week we're going to focus on beneficial insect insects. This week we're going to focus on beneficial insects, primarily praying mantises or praying mantids, the praying mantis. Go ahead and grab your smoking device and smoke along and let's learn all about the praying mantids. Beneficial insects uh, you use in your garden to eat up all of the bad insects that might hurt your garden. You can get ladybugs or you can get praying mantises from like Lowe's, Home Depot, mostly like garden centers. You can order them online. When you get them, you'll get this little egg sack that will need to sense warmth for two months before it hatches. So. I kept mine inside the house. If you have a greenhouse, that's a good place to keep it. You want to kind of put it up on, on a branch and let it hang, because when everything comes out, they come out, they let the gravity pull them out. Of the one to two hundred praying mantises that hatch out of your egg sac, only a few will actually make it. A lot of things make it really hard for them to survive. One thing is that they eat each other. Um, other things eat them, they're very small when they start out, and they also need the humidity level to be very, very high. Every two weeks, for approximately the first ten weeks, the praying mantids will molt, and they will need somewhere to hang that is twice as tall as they are long. And they will need the humidity to be very high, so that they don't have any drying while they're trying to come out of their case. They will also need a safe environment during their molt, in order to make it through because they're very weak when they molt. If you don't have enough pests in your garden to keep them uh, fed, I suggest getting online and getting some flightless fruit flies to feed to them. You can get a little bucket of them and they kind of continue to, um, I want to say replicate, but that's not the right. Continue to hatch and create more flies for several weeks. So if you have a greenhouse, what I did is I took the hatchlings, put them in my greenhouse, and I'll take you closer to look at them soon. Um, and then I've also placed a cup of flies in there so that they can get some extra food, and hopefully a few of them will survive. I don't know. I'll give you an update after a couple weeks. But for now, why don't we go take a look? plants in here for them to hang from. And they like to be on the underneath of the leaves. See there's one. There's one. Pretty cute, if you ask me. This is what the fruit fly mixture looks like. Pretty gross. But they hang out in there, they come out the top. I wanted to do a little update. It's been two weeks. Um, I saw their numbers slowly decline. They got better at hiding. I saw an ant once leaving the greenhouse with a praying mantis in its mouth. They're most likely molting. I'm going to go ahead and open the greenhouse and we're going to take a look and see if we can find any. Okay, I found one. There's one. Made it through his molt. It's very exciting. Yay. As I mentioned earlier, they can be really um, delicate during their molt and they can actually die if they fall. So I don't want to mess around in there too much. I'm glad I found one. One is excellent. If I can find one, I'm sure that there's more. So yay. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, like and subscribe and all of that stuff. Share if you want to. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. 
and I hope you have a great week. See you next week when we talk about my lovely honey locust tree. I moved into the shade of this amazing tree. Okay, so a couple of things that I want to talk about that I've personally struggled with with this tree is uh, 